Good morning. I welcome you to Blessed Sacrament Church. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reminder to all parents, as precaution during the COVID virus, the cry room for small children is closed. And we ask that you always accompany your children to the restroom. And also at this time, I would ask that you silence all cell phones and other types of electronic devices. Our celebrant today is Father David. We begin by praying together the diocesan prayer for vocations found in the back cover of your hymnals, which I'm sorry we don't have right now, but let's start. O oh God, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Bless our Diocese of Savannah with many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Give the men and women you call the light to understand your gift, and the love to follow always in the footsteps of your priestly son. Amen. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, number 586, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the
O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when they first came, so when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last ones worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give the last one the, last one the same as you? Or am, I not, or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I, was, I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many of us at some time in our lives will become familiar with human resources. In today's gospel, HR would not have been happy with what the landowner had done. They would have said it wasn't acceptable to pay the last, the same as the first. We know that back in the time of our Lord, HR did not exist. There was no department to tell us what was just and unjust. Yet people had a sense of what was fair and what was unfair. Day workers were given a daily wage of one denarius. The workday consisted from sunrise to sunset. So naturally it was only fair that those who worked less than a full day should receive less. But in today's parable, The landowner has pity on those who could not find work throughout the day. They had families they had to feed. Through no fault of their own, no one hired them. Therefore, he hires them, some of them even a few hours before sunset, and gives them all the same daily wage. He is not being unjust to those hired in the early morning. He is being charitable, merciful to those hired at the end of the day. Justice and mercy are compatible when charity is involved. Are you envious because I am generous? The owner says to those hired at sunrise who protested that they did not receive more. The exact translation of this is, Do you view my actions with an evil and jealous eye? Properly applied to the point of today's parable, the Lord is saying, if you begrudge generosity to the less fortunate, then you cannot be a Christian. If we do not rejoice in the benefits given to others, then we cut ourselves off 
from the benefits we have received. As Christians, we are obligated to care for the poor. We need to establish governmental and private means to aid those who cannot help themselves. Yes, these agencies must be regulated to eliminate those who abuse them. That is justice. Our main concern must be to care for those who have less. That is mercy. Are you envious because I am generous? Envy and jealousy are horrible. The jealous person looks for ways to destroy another person's life. The jealous person usually ends up destroying their own life. The jealous person does not appreciate his own gifts. All he can see is the gifts that others have. Everybody is different. Every situation is different. No two people are the same. No two situations are the same. We cannot compare or contrast others to ourselves. How is this parable applied to our relationship with God? God loves the person who is faithful throughout their lives. He loves the person who strays for a time and then returns to him. He loves the person who comes to him in the twilight of their lives. Many people respond to God's mercy at different times and different points in their lives. God's love, God loves them for taking that huge step to turn away from their former and sinful lives and for falling into the arms of his mercy. It is a tremendous step of humility to turn from a sinful life back to our Lord. God loves those who take this step. Even though they join St. Augustine in mourning, late have I loved you, O beauty ever ancient and new. Late have I loved you. What matters is they are now with him. They love him now. God loves those who practice their faith throughout their lives, and he loves those who return to their faith. We rejoice in those who join the faith or return to their faith. We are not better than them. We are all sinners. We have all made mistakes. We are not superior to them. At the end of our gospel reading, we come upon the phrase, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. We cannot impose our ways on our Lord. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. We cannot tell God how to be God. We must do our best to respond to the call to labor in God's vineyard as we have received it. That call demands that we are open to God's mercy in our lives and that we become vehicles for God's mercy in the lives of others. That is Christianity. To act otherwise is to begrudge God for his generosity, to look upon God's goodness with an evil and jealous eye. The parable calls upon us to ask God to help us be vehicles of his mercy. We are all recipients of God's mercy. We have all made mistakes, and we continue to sin. But in God's love and mercy, he forgives us, he welcomes us back, and he sets us back on the right path. May we show that same mercy and love he shows to us, to all we come in contact with. When we see our neighbor, do we see Christ in them? When we see our neighbor, do we extend the same love and mercy that God has extended to us, to them? None of us are perfect. All of us need God's mercy and grace. May we always strive to show that same mercy to those we come in contact with. May we always strive to see God in our neighbor. God is with us every step of the way. Just as he loves us unconditionally and shows his mercy towards us, let us too extend that mercy to all we come in contact with.
we will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who was the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward, forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God is our helper who sustains and sanctifies our life. With confidence in our Father's unfailing love, we ask Him. That the church may welcome all who come to the Lord's vineyard, whoever they are and whatever the hour, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater stewardship of creation, that God will impel our hearts to oppose the misuse of the earth's resources and empower us to work tirelessly to protect the magnificence of nature for future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who reap the fruits of the labors of migrant workers may also be sensitive to the dangers of their plight. We pray to the Lord. Lord that educators and students may engage, engage issues of social responsibility and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this Eucharistic assembly may be the gospel's model of community in which there are neither first nor last, but only sisters and brothers in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who approach death and those who have died especially Butch Lowenthal, who died this week, and Father Harry Flynn, whose anniversary we celebrate this week, may ever proclaim that to live is Christ and to die is gain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, thank you for the countless proofs of your gentleness. May we always praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our operatory hymn, We Will Rise Again, 681. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with, devout, with, with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop-elect, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I lead you, by peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. not receive communion at this time, we pray our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I choose to be one with you, Jesus. I want your heart next to my heart, your soul next to my soul, your body inside my body and your blood running through my veins. I want your infinite divinity to fill me completely. Jesus, I want to be one with you in my thoughts, feelings, and desires. What I say and do and what I do not do because of you. I embrace you now inside of me. Jesus, I love you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Communion hymn is I Have Received the Living God, 786.
Before we conclude our Mass, again, I encourage you to take home a copy of our parish bulletin so you know what's going on in our parish community. I'd like to start by welcoming any newcomers or visitors to our parish. Thank you for choosing Blessed Sacrament to celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Also, too, today's second collection is for the Seeds of Change Building Fund. Thank you, thank you for your continued support and generosity. There will not be a 5.30 p.m. Mass or afternoon confessions on this Wednesday, September 23rd. I will be attending the ordination of Bishop-elect Stephen Parks. If you'd like to watch, the ordination will be live streamed at 1 p.m. on the Cathedral Basilica's website. Please let us know if you'd like to have one of the Living with Christ Sunday Missiles. We have already received many requests. You can use these missiles every Sunday and the major feast days all year long. Plus, they make great Christmas gifts or personal prayer books for only $5 each. Please use the sign-up sheet in the back of church or call or email our parish office. The Parish School of Religion for grades 1 through 8 has begun. All children who do not attend Catholic schools should attend our Parish School of Religion. And there is still time to register. Please contact Garrett Sabagal at her email listed in the back page of the bulletin. RCIA, or Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, begins this week on September the 22nd. For those interested in becoming Catholic or who would like to learn more about Catholicism, classes are Tuesday evenings from 7 to 8.30 p.m. until Easter. Reg register for RCIA by contacting Brandon Wallace. The Bible study Walking with Jesus is beginning and space is still available. Choose either Tuesday mornings from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. or Wednesday evenings from 6.30 to 8 p.m. The Bible study runs through November 17th. We meet in the parish office conference room. Contact Angela Strait for details. Our phone and email can be found in our bulletin. Seeds of Change is once again offering bricks in honor of your loved ones or a student. Your donation of $125 for a legacy brick supports the Seeds of Change capital campaign. Order deadline is October 1st. Please fill out a form in the back of church or in our parish office. Again, as a friendly reminder, please take your bulletins home with you. Do not leave them in the church pews. We cannot reuse them. If we could get some help sanitizing the pews after Mass, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for your continued support in this matter. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a blessed day. Please join in singing our closing hymn, Sing of the Lord's Goodness, 582.